After freeing Ankh from the Ashiga factory, we still have work to do. As it turns out, Ankh doesn't want to be working on more than one job at the same time, which I can totally relate to. So we need to help Ankh complete her job for Crimson Dawn before she'll consider helping us at all. But having more time in this line of quest did give me more clarity for the music being used for the Ashiga. First, we need to meet with Kira and Ankh in a shady little location. As we enter, the harp welcomes us, then blending into the guitar. I'm just here to make sure that Ank gets through this alive. But we quickly realize that this is just the general track for Kajimi, which again is kind of disappointing. These are the cutscenes that are supposed to be important to the overall storyline, and for them, general music was just overlaid. There was so much potential here with Kira's character continuing to be used, but nothing. The Queen's handed Kajimi to the Empire, which means no room for anyone else. I help Krisk save the hive, and Crimson Dawn gets in on the market. It's a bet, and I like Krisk's odds. Everybody wins. In order to help, we need to go down to the tunnels and set off one of Ankh's bombs. As we enter the tunnels, a low throbbing begins in the music. It gets incrementally louder and really began to feel almost overpowering or overwhelming at some points, which I actually liked. The heart cuts through occasionally as well, creating a mystery against this low and dark atmosphere. Roger keeps the atmosphere of the music relatively light and in the background though since it's not crucial to anything right now, but also works to bring in different sounds throughout to keep it fresh and interesting long enough to accompany us through these underground tunnels. But music aside, the glitches continued. Most notable was this wall that I somehow got stuck behind. The only way that I was able to escape was by setting off grenades until I died and then respawning. All the while, I just continued to think about what we were asked to pay for this game. But eventually, the bomb is set off and we move in. Drums pick up as we do to signal an increase in tension and energy. This was a really well-planned transition from Rajat as we moved from the low pulsing to the low drum beats with this next track. The repetition adds to this as it feels like we're just waiting for something else to happen, something to go wrong. The track changes substantially then as we enter the actual base, signaled by all kinds of bells first. All right, Nix. Nice and quiet now. Let's not raise any alarms. This blended with the bells that were apparently being played up above to signal the fact that the Ashiga base was now under attack. From there, we get low drones first, but as I continued, I heard the familiar theme that I also heard during our time in the Ashiga factory. This, to me, now confirms that this is a theme for the Ashiga, and that the other theme that we heard while just walking around was simply a theme for Kajimi, in fact. And I really enjoyed how Rajat has kept this theme fresh as he continues to put it in different variations throughout. Personally, I think this theme has been treated in a better way than the Crimson Dawn and Pike tracks that I've heard up to this point. Part of that is just the fact that this theme has been so much more out in the open and clearly defined than the other themes, even if it also wasn't initially. But I also think I've now spent more time in Ashiga buildings than I have for any other group up until now, adding to an increased familiarity with it. I've been noticing as I go back and do the side quests, all of these other themes kind of interplaying as I go to different territories of the different syndicates as well. Someone around next. 
push that button. We lower the security defenses for the base. As we engage in full firefights, the variations continue and move back to the music we heard as we tried to break out of the Ashiga factory as well. All right. Hey kid, did you vent the tumbler? After retrieving the origin strand, the music returns to the percussion heavy music as we find our way out. By staying just with drums, we actually get the chance to hear the pew pews of blasters going off above as well, adding to the moment. As we enter the throne room, the music begins just like the last time we were here, creating a sense of reflection and return. And now that I've heard the Ashiga theme with clarity so many times, I can actually hear the variations that Rajat puts into this track. So now this works. But the first time that we were here, we hadn't heard this theme enough yet to understand what Rajat was doing. And so all of this had been going over my head. And that's the problem if you don't properly introduce leitmotifs when characters are initially introduced. You can't expect people to pick up on musical themes with so much else going on at the same time. You started us down this path, chaining our future to the Empire. I serve no one, and you leave me no choice. The Origin Strand. Brass enter as the Ashiga daughter is killed and the queen retains her power, because that's the choice I made. We are all the hive. Even you. Drop your weapon, daughter. Don't! As we return to the Trailblazer, that Kajimi flute enters again. I still think it's a weird instrument for an ice planet, but it does certainly match the more East Asian architecture design and inspiration. As we speak with Kira then, the typical Kajimi music plays underneath as well. The ominous swells fit perfectly with this conversation now though. Look, I know things got out of hand. I didn't sign up for an execution. And how did you think it was going to end? This is what it takes. It doesn't matter, does it? It was all about weakening the hive and setting them against each other. The galaxy isn't a playground, Kay. It's a prison. And if we want freedom, we have to be prepared to make some tough choices. And that's what, to, to free people like me? Or just hand you the keys? I used to be like you, but my eyes were open to the truth of who pulls the strings of the galaxy. You might think today didn't truly over, you'll realize the cage has been broken, and you'll finally see what real freedom feels like. Lady Kira, the Vermilion is ready for you. You're valuable to the fight, Kay. And with that, we've secured Ankh as a member of our team and are ready to move and find the next member. I decided to head to Tatooine next to work on finding the heavy. As we exit Kajimi, the brass and orchestra fire up a fanfare before the music becomes more lyrical. Notably, here, we don't hear a specific that. theme here as we leave the atmosphere like when we left Tashara with the Trailblazer theme. May I ask you a question? Uh, sure, buddy. How much family do you have? Oh, not that. So, I may not ask you a question. But these glitches continue to overshadow the music and the pluses of this game. Here's another where a stormtrooper is stuck straddling a ladder like a stripper pole. And I can't blame anyone who says they don't like this game. In 2024, we as gamers expect better from a high level expensive game. 
but I absolutely would love to know what all of you think. I'm breaking the game down as I play it, similar to how I would watch a weekly TV show, so there are elements that may make more sense to me as I release later videos with further missions. What kind of glitches have you experienced? What's your favorite theme so far? Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away. And as always, may the... be with you.